Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Trinity Presbyterian Church. We are delighted that you're joining us for worship today. If you are newer to our church family, welcome. We hope this time of worship is very meaningful for you. Please note all the important announcements in the bulletin. There will be a congregational meeting directly following uh, worship on the 29th in order to elect officers. And we will let you know who those officers are in the coming days. We hope to print them next week in the bulletin. So please join us for that. Following that congregational meeting on the 29th, we will have a Terry to celebrate our 50-year church members. And on that day, we will also make uh, Bill Pastor Emeritus. And so it's an exciting day in the life of our church. So join us on the 29th after worship. Also, mark your calendars, Mercer Mission Possible, where we go out and serve um, at the local park, is coming. It's the day before the congregational meeting on the 28th, so join us for that as well. And at this time, let us worship God. You're welcome to join us in today's call to worship. I could sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my head, for I will always sing when your love came down, yeah, I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love Come to worship, for here you will find rest. Struggling? Come to worship, for here you will find help. Distracted? Come to worship, for here you will find your center, which is God. Empty? Come to worship, for here you will be filled. Come, let us worship God. Please stand up and join us in singing the first song, Open the Eyes of My Heart.
be seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Forgive us, O Lord, for not walking in your light and love. We walk into shadowy places of our own choosing and wonder why we cannot see the way to go. We look around for something or someone to trust and forget to trust you first and to trust you the most. We sometimes walk away from you instead of accepting your invitation to come closer. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for not walking in your light and love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Bible tells us that if anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. So hear the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning comes from the New International Version of the Bible, Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 27. On the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came and walked with them. 
but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things, Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women have amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. But some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He then said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken of. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself.
As we come before the Lord in prayer, please continue to, to keep everyone listed in the bulletin in your prayers, along with Jim Moose, who had surgery and is recovering well in the ICU. And please keep the family of Bonnie Schilling in your prayers. She passed away this weekend, so we will be praying for them as well. Let us pray. God, we thank you for music and the ways it lifts our hearts into heaven and invites us into conversation with you. And we thank you for the gift of prayer as well. Lord, we come today with joys, but also with concerns on our hearts. We are worried about family or friends. We ask a blessing on those who need your healing touch today. We pray for Ed and Ginny and Veronica and Christine. We pray for Jim. And we give you thanks that a friend of the Millers, Wayne, has received a heart transplant and is doing well. Lord, we lift up to you those who are moving through a season of grief. We know that that is a long and lonely journey. And so we remember all of the friends and members of this congregation who are missing someone they love. And pray especially today for the family of Bonnie Schilling. Lord, we come to you worried about the headlines in the news. We worry about a world at war and rumors of war. We pray, Lord, for peace, the peace that only you can bring. And help us be peacemakers and peace dreamers, not only in this world, but right here in our local community. Lord, we lift to you the concerns that aren't named here, but the ones that lie on our hearts that you know so well. Concerns about our family or our relationships. We ask a blessing on our life, Lord. And Lord, we come today in thanks for mechanics and musicians and male people. We give you thanks, Lord for street sweepers and statisticians, we give you thanks. For receptionists and researchers, we give you thanks, oh God. For bakers and candle makers, we give you thanks for them too. For bus drivers and baristas, we give you thanks, oh God. For teachers and tax preparers, and bank tellers, we give you thanks, O oh God. For all the people whose lives are linked with ours, and for all whose work undergirds our days, we give you thanks and blessing, O oh God. For you are the life and the love that animates and sustains and strengthens us. So we give you thanks and praise. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we continue our worship through an opportunity to give back to God's kingdom, uh, we are celebrating our senior dinner. Um, I was lucky enough to get an invitation. I don't know if you were. But um, thanks to your generosity, we can bless our seniors this afternoon. And thanks for, to the deacons for making that happen.
speak to us, and may we learn how to listen to your voice in the quiet. Do your voice at dawn's early light. Help us hear you speak into our life and call us to go out sharing the good news with people in our community and in our world. Bless these gifts. May they be used for your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus Christ. Amen. We invite the children to come forward for the children's message, and thanks to Mark Arnold, who's sharing a message with us today. If you are interested in giving a children's message, just let me know.
You are invited to remain seated for this hymn, and we're going to sing all the verses and then the refrain. Our second scripture reading continues right where Sandy left off in Luke 24, verses 28 to 35. Listen for the word of the Lord. As they came near a village to which they were going, that's Jesus and the disciples, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. They told about what happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray. God, we ask for eyes to see and ears to hear your will and your way for us this day. It's in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. When Rocky and I were dating in college, we were six and a half hours apart. He was at school in New Jersey, 
I stayed local at Grove City College. And so it was a long road between these two lovebirds. We logged a whole lot of cell phone minutes in those three years of long distance dating. And remember, back in those days, you only had so many cell phone minutes a month. So we logged a whole lot of cell phone minutes. We logged a whole lot of miles. We would switch off. Sometimes I would fly to New Jersey to see Rocky because I don't like driving. And sometimes he would drive 310 miles across the state of Pennsylvania to see me, which is a pretty long haul if you're like driving on Friday and then driving back on Sunday afternoon, right? But hey, the things we do for love, right? So sometimes I would call Rocky as he was driving across Pennsylvania and I would say, what mile marker are you at? He'd be like, 250, which is totally depressing because we live closer to, you know, like exit 19, right? So... If you ask Rocky, he has labeled those the dark days of his life, driving Interstate 80 in sleet and hail and rain and all kind of stuff, all for love. But it was a long road between us lovebirds. Well, our story today is about a long road. It's about the road to Emmaus. It's in Luke chapter 24. I'm sure you all instantly realized that this is the same Luke 24 that our Easter passage came from this year. So same chapter of the Bible. The road to Emmaus is only in the Gospel of Luke. And in Luke's Gospel, because Luke loves details and he's a doctor, he tells us that it was 7.5 miles from Jerusalem to the town of Emmaus. Now we don't know exactly where Emmaus was or is, but that's a long walk, 7.5 miles. If you were looking at a study Bible right now, or if you're a Bible geek, you might want to know that some ancient biblical manuscripts tell us that it is actually 19 miles to Emmaus. So we have a textual discrepancy here. Which one is it? Is it 19 or 7 point miles? Well, scholars are kind of siding on the 7.5 mile walk to Emmaus manuscripts. So that's where that's what we're going to say. 7.5 miles to Emmaus. Either way, it's a very long walk. Another important thing to note in this passage is that everything that's happening in Luke 24, it's happening simultaneously. So as these disciples are walking the walk to Emmaus, the women in the Bible, like Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, Joanna, and the other female disciples, in this very moment, they are pulling up the suburban to the front of the tomb and discovering Jesus' body is not there. So all of this is happening at the same time. We're told in this chapter, on the third day of Jesus' death, we all think he's still in the tomb, but he's not, right? So here we are on the road to Emmaus. They are walking the road to Emmaus, two disciples, Cleopas, and an unnamed disciple. Who is Cleopas, you ask, and why is he on the road to Emmaus? I have no idea. Okay, Cleopas is one of those people that will show up in this story in the Bible and never show up anywhere else in our life again, except as an answer to a daily double on Jeopardy in the category biblical names. Cleopas, remember it. So Cleopas and the unnamed disciple, they are walking the road to Emmaus. They're on their journey, and suddenly they are visited unexpectedly by a very friendly and very inquisitive stranger who has a very radiant complexion, right? And so they're walking along, and this stranger says to them, what are you talking about with each other? And they look at this guy. They stop. They look at this guy. It's Jesus, by the way, okay? So they look at this guy, and they're like, are you the only stranger in this land that does not know the things that just happened in Jerusalem over these past few days? Are you the only person? And so Jesus responds, what things? What things? And they say, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in word and deed before God and all the people, and how the chief of priests and our leaders handed him over to be crucified. But we had hoped 
that he would be the one who would redeem Israel. But we had hoped. The people in Luke's gospel, all over the gospel, know what it is to hope. Even way in the beginning of the gospel, we see Zechariah and Elizabeth hoping for a baby. And when John the Baptist arrives, Zechariah gives a prophecy about his son and this coming baby Jesus. They talk about the hopes of the people. And then Zechariah says, this is it. These two kids are exactly what we had hoped for. In fact, he says, By the tender mercies of God, the dawn from on high will break upon us and give to people sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death light and guide our feet in the way of peace. Zechariah knew what it is to hope and then realized here it's all that he had hoped for in the birth of these two boys. Later in Luke, we see an everyday guy, his name is Simeon. Simeon bumps into baby Jesus in the temple, and he sees the baby, and he says, this is the kid for whom I had hoped my whole life. I am looking at the consolation of Israel. And then, just a little bit later in Luke's gospel, Anna, she's a prophetess. This is pretty cool. Anna the prophetess meets baby Jesus and says, this is the one our people have hoped for. He is here. This is the one who will redeem Israel. For we had hoped. The people in Luke's gospel, all through that gospel, some of your favorite Bible characters, they know what it is to hope. And we know what it is to hope as well. I am so happy that Luke put the walk to Emmaus in his gospel. And I am so happy that there's an unnamed disciple in there because could that unnamed disciple be us this morning? I mean, don't we have hopes too? I think we all have walked the road to Emmaus in our own way. The road to Emmaus begins in, but we had hoped. But we had hoped for something different. But we had hoped that our life wouldn't look like this right now. But we had hoped, but not for this. The walk to Emmaus always begins in, but we had hoped. As a pastor, I have the honor of sitting with people in their, but we had hoped moments. Both the tough ones and kind of the lighthearted ones. When I was in Charlotte, uh, my best friend Kristen, uh, we were hanging out, and then Rocky and I headed on a road trip to Atlanta, and I knew that Kristen was going that day to um, get an ultrasound to meet baby number three, and so I won't ever forget driving to Atlanta with Rocky and getting a text message, we are at the doctor, it is twins. <laughs> So I called her like, twins, yeah, that's so awesome, that's amazing. And she's like, yeah, it's really great, isn't it? Um, we had hoped for just one more. <laughs> now, these days, right, Joshua and Jacob are kindergartners. We love them. We can't imagine not having them and their two sisters in our lives. Um, but you know, Kristen has a sign in her kitchen that says, um, you think my hands are full, you should see my heart right? But we all have been in a, but we had hoped for something else moment. And so I'm happy that there's an unnamed disciple in this story. I am happy that we have an opportunity to put our name in there or see ourselves walking that road to Emmaus because it also gives us an opportunity to see who's walking with us. Jesus, right? I love the picture of Jesus we get in this passage. Jesus is not just the silent companion on our road of life. No, Jesus isn't silent. Jesus isn't like a precious guiding light in this story, like lighting the path home. Jesus isn't like the silent Lord kind of watching what we're doing, taking notes, naughty or nice list, right? What, Jesus is friend. Jesus is friend in the story. Jesus is God with us, the Lord who walks with us, and talks with us, you know the hymn, right? Um, but he cares about our what things. This is a guy super engaged. What are you guys talking about on this road? That's what Jesus says. What are you guys talking about? 
And then like, don't you know the things? And he's like, what things? What things? Jesus wants to know the what things of our heart. When you talk to Jesus every day as you're reading the scripture, just driving your car, tell Jesus the what things of your heart. Jesus isn't just Lord or distant God. Jesus is the friend who walks with us and converses with us every day. It's like, what things? What things are breaking your heart? What things are you excited about today? Jesus cares deeply about the what things. Well, 7.5 miles is a long way to walk. And so they're walking in, they're talking, and Jesus starts quoting scripture. The goal here is in quoting scripture, their eyes are supposed to be open and they're supposed to, whoa, recognize it's Jesus, right? Just like when we read scripture, we read scripture so that our eyes are open and we can see what Jesus is doing in our life and our world too. Okay, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because these are the disciples. The disciples. I'm going to hit you with that one again someday. Yeah, they're the disciples. They don't get it. So they eventually um, bring Jesus back to the house, and it's when he's breaking bread. He's having the sacrament of communion with them. Their eyes are open, like, oh my goodness, it's Jesus. Bam, and he's gone, because Jesus does stuff like that. And they say, oh my goodness, he is risen. He is risen indeed. The road from we had hoped to he is risen is a long one. It's a long road. But the good news is Jesus walks with us. He abides with us until we find that resurrection moment, until we can say, whoa, Jesus is risen indeed, and resurrection has found me and my situation. Jesus is the Lord who converses and deeply cares about the what things of our heart on that journey from we had hoped to he is risen indeed. Rocky and I's relationship did not exactly start out as we had hoped. So when you're a teenager, your ultimate love story does not involve a a six-and-a-half-hour commute. And if you notice, there are not a whole lot of romantic comedies about long-distance relationships because they're just not funny. It's not a funny thing. But here we are, right? It's pretty cool. Whatever mile marker you are on, know that Christ walks with you in this journey. The road from we had hoped to he has risen is a long one. But know that resurrection is indeed on the way. In fact, he is walking with you today. Let us pray. God, we know what it is to be people of hope. And yet we are also people who say, We had hoped for something different. We had hoped for something, God, but not this. Some days, God, this road feels more like 19 miles and not just seven. So walk this journey with us. Talk with us and get us to that moment where we discover resurrection is on the way. Or better yet, that resurrection is walking with us today. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Please stand and sing with us.
Sometimes the walk to Emmaus can feel more like 19 miles rather than seven, but no, resurrection is on the way. In fact, it is walking with you today. So go out into this world living with justice and kindness and walking your path humbly with God because then you will find yourselves blessed. Know that yours is the kingdom of heaven. Yours is all of the grace and mercy of God. Yours are all of the blessings bestowed upon God's beloved children. In the name of the creating and redeeming and sustaining God, and let all God's people say, Alleluia. Amen. Amen.